Oh, hey guys, um, I didn't know you were here. I was just depositing my check that I got from the land that I just wholesaled. Let me tell you about it. So this deal wasn't that easy. So today the video is gonna be literally the breakdown of the deal, or I'm gonna tell you a story about the most difficult wholesale deal that I had to do so far. So the day started off great. You know, I found the property. I thought it was awesome. I got on the contract for super cheap. I, I got on the contract for $5,500. It's a cheap land, but cheap land has very high demand in my region for some reason. So. Whenever I find those, I always have multiple buyers wanting to buy those. So I had a couple buyers reach out and I went with one and you know, someone that I worked with previously, he got me the amount of money I wanted and everything was good. So about a week before closing, the closing company calls me, it's actually the closing lawyer, and he calls me to tell me that there's a little bit of a complication but there's nothing to worry about. So now I'm gonna go a little bit in terminology and kinda explain a little bit what happened. So the lawyer told me we need to sign something called corrective deed. So when the seller bought it from someone, there is, was an issue in that deed. And it can be as simple as the lot description, legal description I mean, or the lot width, length, and certain things that could be very small but they can cause an issue. So what we had to do, is reach out to the, the seller where my seller bought it from. So I reach out to the seller and he says, hey man, if I have to deal with that guy, I'll rather not sell at all. Well, I'm not happy about it because I'm about to make a good chunk of money. Um, so what do I have to do to figure it out? So I tried to figure out what's going on. The next day we actually schedule a notary, a mobile notary to come out to this guy that's supposed to sign the paperwork, supposed to sign the corrective quit claim deed. So notary comes out and the guy calls uh, my seller and says, hey man, I'm not understanding what's on this paperwork. I don't know what I'm signing. I really need to talk to someone before I can sign this. There's a lot of terminology I don't understand. And he's like, I'm not gonna sign it. And then he calls me. So we were talking on the three way. And for about an hour, we spoke on the phone. And within that hour, probably I explained to him everything what corrective deed is, what it does. I've learned myself because actually I didn't know anything about what corrective deeds are until that moment. So I had to literally Google it while I'm talking to him on the phone and look at my computer and be like, well, what corrective deed is this, this, and this? Uh, last thing I heard from him, he said, okay, I'll sign it. And then he hung up. So then my seller hung up and then he called me. And so my seller says, you know, see how complicated he is? I don't know if I really want to deal with him a lot, you know, blah, blah, blah. And this is what we'll talk within a week. So we, Monday we figure out that was an issue. Monday notary came out. Monday later during the afternoon and that that's what they didn't want to sign. It was actually President's Day. So Tuesday morning, I get a call from the lawyer and say, hey, um, he didn't sign the paperwork. And I'm like, no, 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 he said he'll sign the paperwork. I was on the phone with him for about an hour or so. He's like, no, no, man, he didn't sign the paperwork. I'm gonna check with the notary again, but I don't think they did. So I'm getting nervous and trying to figure out what's gonna happen. Is it gonna be a, the deal is gonna go full through or what's gonna happen? So I call my seller and I say, hey, your guy didn't sign the paperwork, so we gotta figure something out so he can sign the paperwork. My seller goes like, oh, this guy, and he starts going a lot of cursing about saying that they used to be friends, but now he's using him, and there's a lot of like personal stuff going on that really has nothing to do with the land itself. It's just a lot of personal issues between the seller and the seller's seller. So this seller is telling me, oh man, I, I, he did me like this, he's trying to use me for that and blah, blah, blah. He's trying to get use something over me. I don't know what it was, but I wasn't trying to get into it that much. I was just trying to figure out how we can make it work. So the seller tells me, hey, it's about 6 p.m. He calls me, he got back from work. He's like, I'm gonna get figure this out. One way or another, I'm figuring this out tonight. And I'm like, one way or another doesn't really sound safe but I hope everyone is okay. I just want kind of a solution to this problem. Let's see, I mean, if there's any issue that this guy wanna address or whatever, we'll tell him to give me a call and we'll figure it out. Because I called him a couple times already at this point. I called the seller, seller, but he didn't answer my phone calls. So the seller goes to his house, they argue, whatever, and I don't know what happened, I wasn't there. And then he comes back home and he's like, I still don't have a side, I don't know what's gonna happen. He said he's not gonna sign it and now I'm freaking out even more. So the seller seller calls me back at around 9 p.m. at night and he's like, hello, and I'm like, hey, uh, this is Ralph, whatever, you know, I was the guy that's trying to buy your land. I called you earlier, I know you didn't answer, but thanks for calling me back. He didn't know he was calling back, he just saw a missed phone call. And then we started talking and discussed it and this was Tuesday and we agreed that Thursday we'll meet at the title company and the title company will answer all his questions and any concerns that he might have and all that stuff 
But the thing is, he's far away from the title company that's supposed to do the closing. So I actually knew a title company that's pretty close to him. And I was like, I, maybe I can make this work. So after I talk to him, I get off the phone. I don't call my seller because it's like 9.30 p.m. At this, at this point. And I just go to sleep. I wake up next morning and I got three missed phone calls from my seller and one missed phone call from the seller's seller. I call back my seller and I say, hey, what happened? And he's like, um, just call, call the other guy. And I'm like, okay. So I call the other guy and the other guy is like, so do you know what happened last night? I was like, I have no idea. He's like, did you call the seller after talking to me? I was like, no, I didn't. And I was like, it was late at night. So I just kind of went to bed and I assumed that everyone was going to bed. He's like, well, uh, he came in and we started arguing even more and I had to get a restraining order against him. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. I was like, this is not going good. But again, I want to say this not has nothing to do with the land itself. I guess they were just had personal issues, but that kind of made it everything more complicated. So I tried to kind of talk to him, talk him down, like explain to him, you know, kind of calm him down say, hey, I know you guys have personal stuff. This has nothing personal. This is you were doing this for me. You're not doing it for the guy. I really was trying to pull a lot of psychological kind of stuff to calm him down, and hopefully that he understands the situation and he's not. Even though the seller made him mad, he's not gonna be say screw it. I'm not signing anything. So we kind of come to an agreement that he's gonna sign paperwork by Friday. Okay, so this is Wednesday we're talking, and he's like, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do it Thursday because. Now, I don't want to seem like I do it because he told me to do it or I'm scared of him, but I'll do it Friday just to kind of whatever. I don't know, some kind of play that I don't really understand, but whatever it is, I was like, as long as the paperwork is signed, that's all I care about. So what happened, because Tuesday was very late at night that they got into an argument and the police was called, is that Wednesday he didn't go to work, so he was home. And he calls me later on after we discussed that we're gonna sign the paperwork on Friday, and he's like, hey man, we have, we have a little bit of a situation. I was like, well, what's going on? He's like, he has my truck. I gave him the title. It's not even my truck. It's my cousin's truck. And he's like, I'm not going to give you back the truck. If you don't sign the paperwork, you screw me or I'm going to screw you over. So all that stuff is just getting like out of control. And he's like, I'll sign the paperwork if you get the truck back to me. I'm like, cool. Uh, okay, can I drive the truck? He's like, no, the truck is not drivable. You can't drive it. It's a food truck that's just dead. And it's pretty much just a piece of metal that stands on, on the other guy's yard and then you have to tow it about 30 minutes away from him to my house. I don't have a car to tow something like that and I wouldn't even, if I did, I wouldn't even take that as a task because there's a lot of complications that can go wrong. So I would hire someone and that's about $300 to tow from one place to another. But at this point I'm like, screw it, whatever, I'll get this done. Then I call the seller and he's like, hell no, I'm not giving him the truck. If I give him the truck, he's not gonna sign the paperwork. That's the only leverage I have over him. He, he's not he's not signing and I'm not giving him the truck. And I'm like, you guys are just like two kids. I'm like, one can't give you this, one can't give you that. I'm like, that feels like a movie, you know? When that situation, when there's two guys, one, one guy gives like a briefcase full of money, the other one gives the drugs and they like have to ex exchange at the same exact moment. So we're trying to do this, but it's a freaking big UPS food truck that you can't really give at the same moment when he signs it. It doesn't work that way. So what I figured out, I talked to the seller, I said, hey, I was like, you give me the title for that truck. And then I go to the title company with the other guy. He signs the paperwork. I give him the title to the truck. And then after that, I promise him, and I was gonna do it, I will take that truck from your yard to his yard as long as you promise me that you will let me have the truck. Like, let me take it. He's like, Sure. He's like, I don't really know what you can do, but I really hope that you will be honest with me and then you won't screw me over. I was like, man, this is all in my best interest too. I want this figured out. I want this done. So I drive out there, grab the title, then I do some errands. And then on the way to the title company, the seller seller calls me and I'm like, Jesus, what's, what's, what's wrong again? What's going to happen? He's like, Hey man, forget about the truck. I'm like, what do you mean forget about the truck? He's like, just forget about it. He's like, it's not worth it. It's not worth my time. It's not worth your money. It's not worth anyone's time he's like i'm just gonna let him have it and i'm like whoo okay but i'm also scared at this point because i'm like that was the only thing that was gonna make him sign this paperwork now if that's not there will he still sign it he's like oh yeah 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 i'll still sign the paperwork i'll still meet you there at the time we designated and we'll be fine he signed the paperwork and then after that um he didn't take the title i had the title in my hand he didn't take it we just talked for a while after he signed the paperwork we talked to him i heard his part of the story and you know this taught me a, one thing for sure is that even in the story that you think it's just simple when you hear someone not want to sign in something for other person even though that doesn't damage them you think they're just an asshole 
but in this situation there was in every situation there's two parts of two story so there is you know there was the seller seller's part and the seller's part so yeah after talking to, to him he signed the paperwork we got everything to him we got everything done we're close by Friday I got my forty three hundred dollar check from selling that vacant land I work hard for that check I mean there was a lot that happened within those 48 hours that I had to do a lot to make sure this works it was a lot of mental work and I think that's what a lot of wholesaling is especially when you come across complicated deals and that's when you're gonna find the best success because when a lot of wholesalers will walk away from a complicated deal like that or won't know how to solve it you really have to be on your top game if you want to be able to make it work because anyone can close an easy deal uh, easy deal is great and everyone can do it but when it gets to a complicated deal that's when you show your true colors more of the stories that just keep grinding I mean whatever it is you can figure it out there are other complicated deals that I've had to deal with, but this was the most stressful one and the most recent one, so I thought I'd make a video about it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, leave a like, subscribe, comment down below if you have any questions about this deal. I know it's crazy. Or if you want me to tell, talk more about deals and break down deals like this to kind of tell you the real stories behind the deals. And as always, guys, 